How about a stacking starter kit from Yankee? I'm going to give you the three best tips to start stacking silver and gold. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Boy, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. And you know, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would consider doing that down there. Um, if you like this video, give me the thumbs up. I would always appreciate that. But uh, really, I, I'm, I'm so glad you guys are spending time watching my videos. It means a lot to me. So this video is primarily for new stackers. I get a lot of questions by new stackers saying, Yankee, what should I buy? <laughs> it's a classic question. I know you probably have thought that in the past or people have asked you what to stack if you've been stacking for a while. And that's a good sign, everyone. Really, we should be excited to see new stackers enter the fold. And I am really pumped to be able to help anybody the way I can. Now, whoa, I got to say this. I am not a financial advisor. Please consult your financial advisor before listening to anything Yankee has to say. Okay, <laughs> get that out of the way. Now, I've talked at length about why to buy precious metals from a prepper stacker perspective. I'm not going to do that here. I just want to pull back a bit and give you three tips. Now, before I get into that, I'm going to give you a free tip. Free Yankee tip. <laughs> it's not really a tip, but I have to say this, guys. Before you start stacking anything, please get your finances in order. I mean, it almost goes without saying, but, but really, I cringe when I hear someone's up to their eyeballs in consumer debt and says, Yankee, I want to start stacking precious metals. <laughs> like, Whoa, <laughs> I've, even, I've even heard of people who need what's called a payday loan and they want to start stacking silver. <sighs> a payday loan can go as high as like 100% uh, interest, APY. That's, wow. Now, okay, I'm, I'm not trying to be harsh. I would never want to come down on anyone who's hard on their luck, who has gone through a job loss or, or fi uh, uh, other financial uh, calamity, health issues, whatnot. I, I don't want to be mean, but I'm just telling you right now, if, if you have a lot of debt, don't get into stacking right away, okay? Pay down at least your uh, double-digit rate uh, credit card debt first, okay? Why? Because even in a mild financial recession, uh, nothing like we had in 2008, it could wreak havoc on your life. I've seen it happen. So, okay, no more personal debt comments. All right, let's, let's get to the bling. So, so my first tip is to stay clear of collectible numismatic coins and rounds. Okay. This is a classic mistake. I hear this a lot. People get really jacked up about getting involved in stacking. I mean, they've watched the YouTube videos like I did. You know, I, I know the feeling, right? You feel like, oh my word, I want to do that. FOMO sets in. I, I, I got I to gotta get into this. And they, they, they dive in to premium items, proofs, uh, first strikes, those massive, large, you know, five ounce rounds. Um, collectibles from different mints, like uh, the Bradford Mint or the Franklin Mint. Um, what's the other one? Um, oh, National Collector's Mint, I think is another one. Any, any of those fancy mints that you see ads online or in print or on TV, be very careful. In fact, just, just stay away from them, okay? The, they tout these high premium must have silver products don't fall for it okay just just stay away oh and when it comes to gold sometimes dealers will use a um, a fancy ploy to to scare you into buying these really high premium gold items it's called the gold confiscation ah, someone's going to like you know you know rush in and and grab your gold Yankee Cannon. Ah, it's gone. <laughs> Specifically, what I'm talking about 
was um, Executive Order 6102. This is where President Franklin Roosevelt signed uh, 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 an executive order back, it was in 1933, April, I think, uh, and it forbid the hoarding of gold coin, gold bullion, and gold certificates in the U.S. Now, dealers warn sometimes that the government's going to come after your gold unless you're a numismatic collector, right? And you buy this overpriced coin right here. <laughs> this is misleading, okay? So really quick. First, no one was kicking down any doors to grab your gold and, and haul you off into court. It was a voluntary confiscation, okay? Second, a gold confiscation is like really, really unlikely today, okay? We're, first of all, we're not on the gold standard anymore like we were then, okay? Hardly anyone even knows what a gold coin looks like, let alone own one. All right, so there's there's little benefit in going after someone's gold or silver by that you know same token at this point. I mean, the real threat, guys, is the U.S. government going after our retirement and bank accounts. That's the real threat, not gold or silver. All right, and and third, even if there was a confiscation order, who's to say they keep the same rules, right, and exempt numismatics? And and don't forget. This is really important too. Um, precious metals investors back then had to prove they were coin collectors and not bullion buyers. In other words, if you didn't own a substantial amount of rare coins, you are automatically deemed a bullion owner, not a collector. So <laughs> enough with the gold confiscation scare tactics, okay? Don't fall for them, all right? Now, on the same uh, point as numismatic silver, it's true that the modern silver bullion market has radically changed how we stack silver. <laughs> For one, it makes it more fun, more interesting, but you know, it was not like that. When Yankee was a wee lad, I had few options, okay? It was basically um, constitutional silver, like this right here, half dollars. Uh, this is a uh, 30% silver or 35% silver, sorry, nickel, uh, quarters, dimes, halves. The quarters, dimes, and halves, as well as the uh, silver dollars are 90% silver. That is constitutional silver. And that's pretty much what Yankee had to uh, stack. I, yeah, there were some government-issued bullion back then. Shoot, I was, what, 20 years old, I think? Back when the American Silver Eagle came out? So before then, I didn't have a lot of options. But now... Oh my word, we've got all kinds of options for silver. There's no end to the collectible silver coins that, that you can get, and rounds, and bars for that matter too. But many come with a very high premium, and it can take years to recoup that premium. So you need to be careful. I mean, I, I have some here. I call these the uh, <laughs> my, my silver ice cream cones because they are not part of my steady diet and I do occasionally have to have ice cream at an ice cream uh, shop and I occasionally love to get some higher premium silver coins yeah this one has the queenie on it <laughs> I love I love the queen's beast they're really cool this was neat that was one of my earliest um, higher premium items this is the uh, Z Singalis pretty cool and of course, you know, all these countries have these mints now, and you can get some amazing higher premium stuff. Now, when I say numismatic, or uh, that's usually that really high premium silver, semi numismatic, eh, moderately premium, or moderately high premium, that's, you know, I, I buy it occasionally. I'm not saying that you should never ever get into numismatics or semi numismatic silver coins. Frankly, I'm still a bit salty over missing out on that enhanced reverse proof American Silver Eagle the other day. <laughs> but that's only because I probably would have flipped the sucker for a tidy profit, right? Um, actually, I do 
I do occasionally, I'm not a flipper stacker, but I occasionally flip some silver. You know, these are the, uh, the Queen Anne's Revenge, black flag, black beard coins. I got them for you know, a little bit of a premium and they're already going up in, in price. I'll probably flip most of them except for maybe one, but I'm not a flipper stacker primarily. But in, in even if you aspire to flip your silver, be careful when you're starting out. You know, start with the classics, okay guys? And by classics, I mean, you know, constitutional silver. I, I really don't do much in the 35% silver. Nickel, sorry. <laughs> I stick with the 90s, right? You know, get get these 90% silver constitutional coins. Touch them to your heart's content. You don't have to worry. They you know, have a lot of history to them. They're really great. Try to get them a uh, little wear or maybe get some, you know, old ones if you have to. Whatever. Constitutional silver. It's a great way to stack when you're starting. Be careful, too, when it comes to these two, right? Morgans and Peace Dollars. They are... Oh my goodness, they're absolutely gorgeous, but they're not exactly constitutional silver in terms of low premium. You do pay a premium for these. So, you know, just be really careful uh, with Morgans and Peace when you're starting out. Also, government bullion. Again, I'm going to tell you right now, stick with the basics. If you try to get into numismatic silver or gold right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, the odds are high you're going to fall for a bait and switch with some shady dealer trying to get you to overpay for a rare coin. Don't do it. Just start out with this stuff. You know, American Silver Eagle. This is a, this is a circulated one. Or cull. Touch it to your heart's content. It's, it's, it's silver. So you, and, and this actually is in 1986, the first year the American Silver Eagle came out. All right, and in here is another one of my favorite ones, the Canadian Silver Maple Leaf. It has some really good security features. It's cheaper than the American Silver Eagle. Uh, it has some really cool designs. They do update the designs. We're going to have to wait until 2021 for them to finally update this reverse design, but it's coming. Can Canada knows what they're doing. The Royal Canadian Mint loves to add privy marks and other things to it. Yeah, it has Queenie on it, but you can always just flip it over and keep the maple leaf up. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a trusted coin, especially up here in uh, New England, where I live. Those are great, great bullion silver to buy. When you get into gold, I like gold bullion too. American gold eagle. There's a one ounce. You cannot go wrong with a gold eagle. And if you want to see... The beauty that is 24 karat gold, stick with the gold Canadian maple leaf. This is a quarter ounce. I love stacking the quarter ounce for fractional gold. This is a great way to start. Now, I've gotten a lot of comments from people saying, Yankee, you're missing out on one thing. You talk about constitutional silver. What about constitutional gold? The pre-33 gold, right? I'm, I'm, I'm starting to come around <laughs> to pre-33 gold, but I need to be careful. And you need to be careful too. There's a lot of, uh, uh, of room to be taken with pre-33 gold too. Stick with uh, the non-numismatic pre-33 to start. Get, get it as low premium as possible, all right? But uh, yeah, I think, I think Yankee's going to gonna get his first pre-33. 33 gold soon. Well, maybe not soon. I got a lot of other stuff I got to buy too, but all right. So anyways, <laughs> enough about me. That is the first tip, guys. Stay clear of the numismatic silver and gold when you're starting. Number two, make use of ETFs. Use them. Now, I had someone in the community reach out to me and say, Yankee, that's it. I got a stack I have all this money in my retirement account. I'm only, I think he was in his 30s. That's it. I'm cashing out. Cashing out of his, his 401k. Or or maybe I'm going to take a loan and use the money to buy. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. <laughs> That's not, I believe, the best course of action. You got your money locked up in your retirement account. 
you need to be very careful of what you do with that. If you take your money out early, you're going to get socked with penalties, with the taxes. Don't do it. In fact, be very careful if even if you take out a loan. I know people say, well, Yankee, you know, you're taking out a loan. You're going to repay that loan back to yourself. <laughs> be very careful. Depending on the company and the rules and so forth, I'm not a tax expert, but I do know when I looked at loans years ago on my 401k, I could only take out half of it. Uh, I had to liquidate the other half or at least put it in a money market because it's, it's safe there. And then I had to pay it back. I think it was 1% over prime. So be careful on what you do with your retirement accounts. All right. Uh, but, you know, you can check out uh, ETFs, uh, ex exchange-traded funds, uh, for investing in gold and silver with your retirement accounts, whether it's an IRA or 401k, SEP, whatever. This could be a good way to increase your exposure to precious metals. Um, you know, maybe it's time to sell some of those high-flying stocks. We just hit another all-time high in the Dow. <laughs> just be careful with uh, what you do with your retirement. Uh, I'll give you a, a side tip really quick. If you're changing jobs, the U.S. tax law allows you to roll your 401k over into a self-directed IRA. And that can open up all kinds of opportunities for you outside the classic financial investment products that the government really, really wants you to throw your money into. So, you know, the ones that the smart money are rapidly getting out of, I'm, I'm just saying, check into it if you're changing jobs. But regardless... You got to be careful with your retirement, as I said. Use ETFs carefully, sparingly, because remember, if we do get a major crisis or a collapse, it's going to be um, very eye-opening to see just how many ETFs are really backed by physical silver and gold. We got to be very careful with uh, the gold ETFs like GLD or SLV. But I did want to mention that if you have an IRA, check out gold and silver ETFs. And the third tip that I want to give you is around where to buy your precious metals. I, I could do an entire video on this and others in our community have done some great videos on where to buy gold and silver. I like to buy my gold and silver at my local coin shop. I'm blessed to have one really close to where I live and work and it's just a wonderful uh, blessing to be able to go to Tim's. I'm gonna shout him out again, coin and stamp shot <laughs> in Manchester, a great guy. Um, it's worth establishing a relationship with the dealer to better understand, you know, what to buy, how to buy it. Um, you know, if you establish that relationship, if you, you know, buy regularly from him or her, you're going to get better deals. Um, I know uh, Tim actually, after buying a few things from him and, and, and doing the Yankee swap <laughs> with him uh, from the Coast to Coast show, he said he wants to be a sponsor of the Coast to Coast show and actually, um, you know, hold some stuff aside and, and, and donate it to some giveaway. So, wow, th that is really cool. And in fact, somebody in one of my streams asked me if I was going to ever do an interview with Tim um, and, and post it. And absolutely, I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask him. I'm, I'm sure that would be a fun thing to do and people would watch it. But anyways, a local coin shop. Some of you might not have uh, the opportunity to go to a local coin shop. I, I get that. Um, maybe you, you live too far away or you have some mobility issues or, you know, for a lot of reasons. And, you know, shoot, if gas prices go up, it's going to cost just to get to the place. So I get that. But that is, to me, the number one place to, to get your precious metals. However, it's really nice to be able to buy online. Um, I regularly use a variety of uh, online bullion companies. I won't list them all, but some of my favorites are, you know, SD Bullion, JM Bullion, um, AppMex occasionally. Um, There's so many really great online bullion dealers. And if you're careful, 
and you, you know, search carefully uh, the different deals, you can really find some good deals, especially if you're buying in bulk. If you're going to buy a large uh, purchase, it's worth checking out online bullion dealers. You can, you know, avoid uh, shipping costs after a certain amount, usually around $99. And, you know, it's just... It's just a, a convenient way to get them. Also, eBay. I know that's like a, oh, you can't buy precious metals on eBay. What are you, crazy? You're going to get ripped off. No, no, no. I'm talking about the bullion dealers that have their shop on eBay. Really awesome way to get some precious metals, especially if you sign up for eBay Bucks. Check that out. I'll, I'll put a link in the description on eBay Bucks. So that's where I tend to buy them. You know, my local coin shop, online bullion dealers, there's other ways to do it too, especially with constitutional silver. You know, one of the apps that I love to use is LetGo. And it's amazing how many people will uh, try to get rid of their silver on that app. Um, you you got to keep an eye out for the good deals, obviously. Some people have no idea what they're getting rid of. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing. They think, oh, silver, I'm going to sell this half dollar for 20 bucks. Really? <laughs> or sometimes you get someone who says, um, silver coin, hmm, a couple bucks. So <laughs> you really do need to do your due diligence on apps like that, but it's a great place to buy um, silver. Just got to be careful too when you meet up with people, do it in a public place. So there you have it, Yankee Stacking Starter Kit. <laughs> the three best tips that I have to start stacking silver and gold right now. Thanks again for watching Yankee Stacking, and I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.